Hey, how's it going? It's Craig. I'm out in the garage and today we're going to compare the Elgato HD 60S Plus with a cheaper alternative, the McBezel HDMI 4K. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these two systems. Um, I've been using the Elgato for a while now, and it's a, a great little system. Um, 1080p is more than enough for me. I'm only in capturing retro gaming systems, so if you're capturing um, modern systems, then uh, you may even want to go higher than the, than the 6S Plus, but it, for me, it does everything I want it to do. Um, but this one got sent to me the other day. Um, the website that sent it to me will be linked in the description down below um, to this product. But that's it, that's all they wanted for it. They didn't say that it's a sponsored video and I have to give a positive review on it um, or anything else. So I'm gonna give an honest review on it. And if I think it's comparable to this, we'll have a look at what the, the best value for money is. So we're gonna be using a HDMI um, converter. So this converts your SCART into HDMI. Um, I've tried about four different ones of these and this is the best one. This one does the all the different systems I run and it does the RGB cables as well, which is, uh, really required that I wanted to do a nice quality picture if I'm going to be capturing it So we'll set that up and put it for um, the interface for both systems So that's the only constant that we're going to see that and a Sega Mega Drive that I'm going to be running Okay, so because I've been using the Elgato for a while I'm not going to open that and show what was in the packaging because I can't remember exactly off the top of my head If I put everything back in this box and maybe one two HDMI's in there I can't remember exactly um, but what we're going to do is we're going to open this one because it's just been sent to me, I honestly haven't opened it yet. And we'll open it up, see what's inside, and we'll go from there. Cool. Okay, so here's our retail boxing on this one. It's the McBezel HDMI 4K, as I said. Um, basic brown packaging. Obviously, the Elgato has a lot fancier packaging, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for whether the product's any good. So let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, so we've got, first of all, a blue USB cable. Let's open that up. So it's a, looks like a USB to USB. I don't know what that's used for, whether that's for the power or um, something else. We'll have a look at that in a second. Then we've got the unit itself. That's actually quite nice. So it's a nice metal finish. Um, I'll compare it to the Elgato in a bit. But at the moment, that's a, a really nice finish to it. Really nice, smooth, no jagged edges on it. Looking very, very neat so far. So yeah, impressed with that at the moment. So USB 3.0, video capture, HDMI 4K. Cool. On the bottom, we've got made in capture, uh, made in capture, made in China. Um, yeah, very nice. So okay, let's put that aside. What else have we got in here? HDMI cable. I'll be using the same HDMI cable for both tests just to make it fair. Um, so this one's got lots of cable ties on it to tie them up. But basically, let's have a look at the caps on there. Okay, so they're not gold, but they're silver HDMIs. So maybe we'll use that cable for both of them just to make it equal um, for both capture cards. So we have a... Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see that properly. That's a... USB-C to USB adapter. Okay, so that got a USB-C end on that end, and then USB on that end. So that must be for this cable, if you want to connect it to a USB-C port on your laptop. So that might be handy for the for the Mac, actually. Um, so that's pretty good, we might be using that. We've got a little thank you for your order card. And then a little instruction book. Let's see what this says. Okay, so it just tells you where all the LED lights are, what they do, how to power it, specifications, and the pass through. Um, I won't go through this in detail, but if anyone does want to see photos of this, then give me a shout and I can take pictures and put them somewhere for you to have a look at. And final item in here is a USB 
mini is that what it's called usb uh connector to usb um so that's obviously for the power for the system as well cool so that's everything that's in the box let's tidy out the way so you've got hdmi cable usb cable usb and the usb c adapter a little mini instruction book nice little thank you card and the unit itself cool looking good so let's get set up on this get it all up and running and then uh, see how they compare on the capture brilliant catch you in a minute okay before i start i'm going to give you a little bit of disclaimer that i'm going to be capturing these two just to show a comparison between the two i'm not going to be um setting this up really accurate and getting everything sorted um this is a temporary setup behind me so i'm going to be capturing with a, a 16 by 9 crappy little tv um which is a bit of a nightmare because i don't have the remote for it so i can't change from 16 by 9 down to 4 by 3 so some of my outputs on this are going to be absolutely all over the place i'll try and correct them in obs when we get to obs um but we're gonna have to go with what we've got at the moment so uh, until I can get a remote for this TV or I can swap this TV out for something else then we're gonna have to go with this whole uh, mishmash of resized um, systems it's it's not gonna look pretty but it, it'll just show you how the hardware works and whether we can compare the two um, whether they do the same type of thing really so let's let's do a bit of a, a review it's not a definitive um, detailed review because of that issue but it'll show you the aspect ratios and it'll show you the outputs that they can both do um, and then we'll do a little bit of gameplay and go from there. Cool. Okay, so I've got this one set up. So this is the um, the new McBezel one that we've been given as a test. Um, it's running from an HDMI to SCART, um, SCART to HDMI converter. Um, this one gives me the best outputs that I've tried quite a few. Um, so this is coming direct from a Mega Drive. Uh, HDMI cable is then going into the uh, capture device you've got a HDMI cable going out to the TV as I said my TV is absolutely terrible so um, this isn't going to be the best capture that we can do on this device but it'll show us a comparison between the two pieces of hardware um, then I got a USB-C cable on this one so this is a nice piece of additional kit so hopefully you can see that there's a USB-C cable going in um, well it's a USB cable USB 3 cable going into USB-C adapter, so we don't have to use any adapter for um, the Apple USB-C um, connected on there, so that's pretty nice as well. So I've got OBS open, let's take a look at how we can bring in a footage from this system, see what it looks like, and then we'll capture it on to the um, Elgato as well and see what options we've got. Um, apologies that it's not going to be a, six, uh, a 4x3 capture, so I can imagine straight away as soon as I click on here that we're going to do a uh, new video capture device. I'm going to put in a new one which is this Muck Basil bezel um, capture and we're going to OK on there. Okay, so we're going to drop down this little thing and there we go. So OBS virtual camera is just uh, using your screen as a camera. That's an OBS feature. FaceTime camera is our FaceTime. So this is the USB 3.0 HD video capture. And there we go. You got it showing on screen straight away. It's in this horrible 16 by nine. Um, so it's outputting at the moment at 1280 by 720. Uh, let's drop that down and we've got 960 by 40, 640 by 480. Let's have a look at how that looks. Okay, so that's a bit more. We could stretch that into the right shape, I suppose. Um, 352, 288, 320, 240. Okay, so, and then high. I don't know what high means. Probably the highest it can go, is it? Um, I'm going to try 640, 480 um, in this square capture. It's got the jail bars top and bottom on it. Um, and I'm going to stretch it to fit this background to see how it looks. Okay, so let's get this down here okay so that that's a bit of a representation of what I've got on my um, TV at the moment so as I said my TV is capturing a 16 by 9 output so it's not ideal um, but it it is the the setup we're running today and unfortunately uh, it's what we're gonna have to try and put up with while we while we test these um, let's restart our game 
So we've got road rash in, in the system. Let's have a little blast on road rash so you can see a little bit of comparison from the start on both the systems. Okay, let's go with the default on everything and we'll do the same on both capture cards then. Okay, so here we go. I haven't played Road Rash in a long, long, long time. I used to love this game. I've got a motorbike myself and a, and a scooter just sat over there. And um, when this came out, I was a lot younger, obviously, punching people. And um, yeah, motorbikes just fascinated me as a kid. And yeah, I knew I was going to have motorbikes one day. I can't remember when this came out, but probably when I first started to ride a motorbike actually off road. Um, so yeah, everything motorbikes was really good for me on Mega Drive and things like that. Even if the gameplay wasn't great, I probably would have loved it anyway just because it got motorbikes on it. Okay, so this gameplay I'm watching on the TV rather than on the capture device just because the pass through is probably better than the capture frame rate um, on OBS. Oh, I'm trying to punch people as I'm going through them. I can't hit anyone. Okay, so that's that's enough gameplay. I I don't know how this is going to compare to the Elgato, but so far I'm really impressed with it. Um, if anything, it, to me, on first impressions, it's running exactly the same as the Elgato did when I last used it. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it so far. I don't know what the output's going to be like. We're going to have to compare what the, the screen recording looks like. Um, but as an initial setup, this is looking pretty good. Okay, so let's... Stop this one, uh, get the El Ghetto set up, and see what they compare like. Cool. Okay, so um, same setup, but we've got the El Ghetto in here now. So basically, the SCART's still coming from the, the Mega Drive, we've got the power, same HDMI cable set up on this. Um, comes across into here we've got this USB cable which I've used the same adapter on that USB-C to USB cable just to give it a bit of a equal comparison um, and then the Elgato in replace of that other piece of hardware so everything else is pretty much the same setup so I've only took me two minutes just to swap over let's get onto the laptop and see what we can do so I'm going to delete oh, I've already deleted no there's there's McBezels at the top I'm going to delete that one and add a new video capture device and I'm going to call this one El Gato Capture I'm OK with that and then El Gato it's got the hashtag number 2 on there because I've used this on the system before so it's obviously recognised I've had an El Gato on you before um, select that I don't know whether the colours a little bit brighter on this one. I'll compare them when we do a bit of a, a video comparison in, in a bit, but at the moment looking like for like. Um, so same resolutions as well, 1280, 720 is default, 960, 540, 640, 480. So let's do the same. I think I did 640, 480 last time. Put that in. Let's drag him out to the full size of this box. You can see this is not to do with the capture cards, this is to do with my crappy TV, I think, screwing with the picture. Um, so ignore that, just look at the gameplay footage, see if it compares equally from one system to the other. So let's restart this Road Rash, do a, a gameplay again. So we've got Road Rash title screen, again let's go to the default. I'm not putting the sound up loud on these. Um, just because I don't want to get done for copyright on it. Um, but here we go, let's let's get into it, see what it plays like. Okay, so at the moment, everything looks very similar between the two systems. Gameplay is running smooth on the, the pass-through. The Elgato's tried and tested for me, so I've used this quite a few times. Um, it works fine for me. Can't play Road Rash for the life of me. I've only got Road Rash one. I think Scott Zager Zombie, um, who just passed 1,000 subs, so congrats, Scott. Um, had a copy, so I need to message him 
Uh, let's see if he's still got it. Or was it Lee Retro Chef? One of you guys. If you if you watch this and you've got a copy of Road Rush 2, I'm not worried about manuals and things. None of my, I'm not a complete in box collector. Um, if you've got a copy of it and you're willing to sell, give me a shout. Because um, I wouldn't mind the second version of this. Just to play on once I've had a good blast on this one actually. Because I haven't played this game for absolutely years. Probably since it first came out. I remember you could get was this Road Rush 2 you could get weapons and things? I think you can get a bat on this one. But I think on Road Rush 2 you could get chains and everything else. Or was it on this one? I really can't remember. I've been such a long time since I've played it. But it's a, a game that I absolutely loved as a kid. Because when these games came out, I probably just started riding motocross bikes and off-road bikes and things. Oh, here's a police. Oh, I missed him. Um, started riding motocross bikes around the age of... 11, 12, uh, my brother taught me, and then yeah, it was just going down Barry Dock on the off road track down there. Um, so anything motorbikes at that time just fascinated me. Me and my mates, um, we had awful bikes, FS1Es and things like that, which are not even off road bikes, but we used to rag them off road when we could. Um, yeah, so going off on a tangent there, let's turn this off and compare them. On the capture like for like let's see what we got as a, a capture cool okay so i've got these side by side now um i've got the mcbezel on the left hand side as i look at it and on the right hand side i've got the um el gato and to be fair they look, both look great um the uh, mcbezel's got uh you can see that the, the grays and the blacks are different colors on it color ranges are slightly different so um the, the Elgato does take it slightly but honestly it's a it's marginal it's, it's really small amount and I'd be really happy with that McBasil one um, so the colors on it are looking uh, as I say it's the when you're looking at the um, title screen so I'll put the road rash title screen up now and if you look just at the top and the bottoms where those jail bars are you can see the color difference and then maybe if you look at the black motorbike um, the shading on it towards the bottom of the, the cowl in the, where the indicators and things are is a little bit different but it's not major um, but gameplay and everything else let's skip across to some gameplay uh, and show you that because I think the gameplay is pretty much similar and once you're into the game that's what really counts and the colors of the greens are slightly different um, the sky if anything probably in detail looks nicer on the um, McQuazel one and um, yeah but the comparison of those gameplays is pretty good I wouldn't if you if you didn't compare them side by side you wouldn't have known there was any difference in the two to be honest um, if I captured one on one day and one on the other day you wouldn't really notice much difference um, I'm really chuffed I'm really really pleased and I, I can't remember I'll have a look at the two retail prices of these in a minute and um, uh, when I do a wrap-up but I think it's quite a big difference and I don't think to be honest there's that much difference in the capture to to justify that but we'll have a look at the prices do a bit of a wrap up and um, see how it gets on as a, a, a little bit of a summary at the end cool okay so that's it that's the the Elgato HD 60s plus and the McBasil 4k pass-through um, capture card they're both 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 very similar if I'm totally honest the Elgato does peak it um, the title screen on that road rash and then the gameplay um, if you look back at them you can see the difference between the two um, but I would say that retails for about 150 to 170 pound at the moment and whereas that one retails under 50 pounds so I think it was about 48 pounds um, that's you could get three of those for the price of one of those and the difference wasn't that huge um, if you're a purist and you really want to go for the the crisp quality output then you're going to need to shell out for an Elgato, I think. Um, but honestly, if I was buying both of these again, I'd probably go for that one just on the cost of um, how much you're saving on it. Um, and the quality is still really good. Um, if you get really serious and you want to get into it at a higher level, then um, yeah, you might want to go for an Elgato or something different entirely. Um, I've only scratched the surface with these. I'm doing a retro gaming console onto. Um, a screen for the OBS. I wasn't really going for high-end capturing and things like that. 
Um, this is just for retro gaming references and things like that. Um, I've also got an issue on my system. I'm thinking about it back. It was. I don't think it is my TV that's messing with things. I think it's that SCART HDMI connector. Um, I think I need to change some settings on there because that's where I'm getting that extra bath on the right hand side, I think. Um, but all in all, I could have cropped that out in OBS and done a nice 4x3 output. Um, but it, it's looking good. I'm, I'm really chuffed with both of these systems. If I was to buy it again, I don't know whether I've said this already, but I think I'd buy that. It's my um, gut instinct that I'm not doing enough streaming uh, to justify one of these. Um, so I think the £50 over £150, um, Tim McBasil would have taken it for me. Um, as I said right at the beginning of this video, I was given this free of charge. Um, I wasn't asked to do a positive review on it. I was just told to um, review it, see what I think of it and then um, link to them in the description which is down below. So I'm not making any money out of this, I'm not making anything for it. Um, I know I've got a free device but I'm actually giving this away to somebody I know. So I'm going to be sending out to Eddie Rolex Core um, free of charge. I'm not looking to make money on this at all. So the total honest review and total above board um, thinking of what I think of these two devices. So. Cool, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's some benefit to you. If you're looking for a capture card, then um, I hope that's given you a little bit of a, an indication of what the differences are between a almost a budget version and then a, a high-end version. Um, again, if you're looking for setup guidance and things like that, look elsewhere on YouTube, because this is just scratching the surface. But I hope it's been of use, and I'll catch you soon. Cool.